Today we're coming at you from my hometown, Brad Creek, Alberta, situated here in the foothills of Rocky Mountains. It's actually a good place to start talking about topographic maps and how to use topographic maps while deer hunting. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about how to read a map, what, what uses it does have, how it can benefit you while planning a trip or, uh, or, or navigating a new area. Then I'm going to talk about some other tools in sort of in the age of technology that actually might provide you with a little bit better, a little bit better techniques and strategies for exploring area and finding deer. A topographic map looks like any other map that you may be familiar with but it has contour lines which show the elevation gain and loss on that landscape. Now, my personal perspective is that a topographic map and an understanding on how they work is a useful tool in the toolkit, but it might not be the one thing that separates you between you and a big buck. So a topographic map is actually a great tool for planning an expedition into an area with varied topography, but in an area where there's very little topography, like I'm thinking the prairie provinces and states, North Dakota, Saskatchewan, those types of places, there isn't a lot of topography and the elevation net gain and loss on any, any expedition of yours is actually likely to be low. So a topographic map is not gonna be that useful. But having a strong understanding of the principles of topographic maps and how they work will help you plan tr trips. So the scale here shows that each contour line is 25 meters. So this is actually a pretty detailed map here. Now if we look at the contour lines, here on a, here's a hike that I have done, right? This is where you're gonna start. And then each one of these contour lines is a full circle. And every time I cross the contour line, I've gone up 25 meters of elevation, right? So if I wanted to say, get to this Rawson Lake, but then I wanted to climb to Mount Surreal, which people do do, I need to count every single one of these lines to re recognize how many meters of elevation I'm gonna increase. Now, to me, that looks like, there's probably 30 lines here, so that would be 750 meters of elevation. Each one of these squares equals one kilometer. So to go from Rawson Lake to Mount Surreal would be about, I haven't counted the lines, but it's, about, it's probably about 30. That'd be about 750 meters up over one kilometer. Now that would be extremely difficult, right? So if I wanted to plan a hunting expedition and thought I was just gonna go from point A to point B, well, this would tell me that's gonna be a lot harder, a lot, a lot harder than I thought right? So I have, to I have to plan all that out, especially if I'm in remote territory, that what am I going to do with my hunting gear? What am I going to have to pack a deer out if I've got to cross all of this elevation? Now we see here right at the top of this peak, you can see that there's a full concentric circle, right? And then all the other circles sort of go out like that all the way down. But if I'm at the peak, right where this black dot is, if I go, if I keep crossing elevation lines down, I'm coming down until they start going the other way. So that's how you can read that map. If you're very familiar with topographic maps and how, to, and how to read them, you can actually build a mental image of what that landscape is. And if you take courses on orienteering or topography, you would be tasked at looking at a map that just shows contour lines and a bit of landscape. And you would actually have to say, maybe draw a 2D image of what you're looking at or, take, or look at pictures of that landscape and then identify which picture belongs to that topographic area. So in that way, you can look at a map and, and better understand what that landscape looks like. But in the age of technology, Google Earth is gonna be a better tool for you than using a topographic map. So if I wanted to explore a new hunting area, I would probably look at Google Earth first, because that is gonna give me a better indication of where cover is, where water is, creeks, trails, all the actual visual elements of that landscape that I otherwise would not be able to see with a topographic map. And with Google Earth Pro, you can actually plot out your, you can plot out your, your proposed trekking route and it'll give you the net elevation gain and loss. It's not a super refined tool, it's not actually that accurate, but it will give you a pretty good idea of what you're looking at. Now, if you use Google Earth Pro, along with an actual topographic map, that really will help you refine what you're looking at. But the problem with topographic maps is that they're actually really expensive. You know, you can get a topographic map for a national park, but you're not gonna be hunting in a national park. You're gonna be hunting on private land, most likely, and a topographic map in that area will probably be hard to find and could be expensive. It might be $100 or something like that. So, you know, is that something you really want to use? I'm not totally sure that it is. The one benefit that I do find on topographic maps is actually being able to plan out the amount of energy that you're going to exert on a long trek. What I mean by that is that if you're looking like on your map and you think I want to walk from, from point A to point B, and on the map that looks like it's 10 kilometers, there, there's a principle of expeditions called Naismith's Rule, which basically says that for every five kilometers or three miles of distance forward, 
you're going to allow yourself one hour of travel time. Yet, for every 600 meters in elevation, you're going to need to add an extra hour of travel time. So if you plot out your route on a topographic map and you know that it's 10 kilometers, that is going to take you two hours to walk it. But if you factor in the elevation, you can actually calibrate how much longer that is going to take you. So if it's 10 kilometers forward, but 600 meters of elevation, you know that that's going to be a three kilometer hike. And if you're going long distances in new areas, it is actually important to know how much elevation you're going to gain or lose because that is going to significantly increase the amount of energy that you have to exert in traveling. And if you look at your route and it's a lot of elevation, well, that's sort of changed your plan and how much time you need a lot for yourself. And you have to be honest with yourself about how much you can hike. So those are the benefits in hiking remote areas with a lot of with a lot of varied topography. A better tool for you than a, t than, than, than a topographic map, which is, is sort of hard to come by, and, you know, is not really gonna, gonna change your hunting technique, is actually a GPS. However, a GPS, you're gonna need to understand how topographic maps work in order to properly read your GPS, because a GPS will have all those contour lines and uses the sort of same principles of, map, of cartography that a strong understanding of how these maps work is gonna allow you to read your GPS, but a GPS in any hunting situation, any hiking situation, is gonna be a far more valuable tool. So my recommendation is to spend the money and spend the time learning how to use a GPS and then forget about ever trying to carry around a topographic map. Right, so I look at my map at home and then I plan out my route, right? I plan out my route before I go and I get a better understanding of what I'm gonna be doing and then I take my GPS with me. And that, that sort of is a fail safe for getting lost at any given time. Hey guys, hope you liked the video. If you have any questions or anything else you wanna know, put them in the comments below and we will put in another video answering all your questions. We wanna be the best resource for deer hunting out there on the internet, on YouTube, and we'll continue to put out great content, so please subscribe below.